Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on this video. If it sounds like that I'm recording this video on an airplane, it's because they're sandplasting the water tower across the street and sort of sounds like a jet engine. And if I walk out my front door, it's every bit as loud too. So I apologize for the background noise. Couple of things I wanted to talk about. First of all, I wanted to point out here, we're running on Linux Mint 17.3. I swapped the drives out, had been doing some Ubuntu for a while. But every time I looked at the Unity desktop, it made me sad. So I went ahead and switched it back because I know the Unity desktop will be going away. And that's uh, something I really want to talk about. But first of all, let me jump in here real quick and give you guys a heads up on EasyLinux.com. If you click on EasyLinux.com and it's not there, if something isn't working right in the next couple of days, that has to do with the fact that I'm having a bit of an issue transferring the EasyLinux.com domain name from one registrar to another. I'm trying to get GoDaddy to release it so that I can go to another registrar and they are being a pain about it and not actually releasing the domain name even though I have been through the steps like three times with the other company so I don't know how this is all going to shake out so if it goes away for a little while don't worry we'll get it back up and running real fast hopefully the wheels will turn quick enough that you guys won't notice a difference let's talk about Ubuntu because the last video that I posted which was called Ubuntu, uh, the end of Ubuntu as we know it, that has gotten a lot of attention, like lots and lots of views, many, many comments, and there are a couple of things that I want to clarify that I was talking about in that video. Also, maybe give just a little bit of a follow-up. Information is still rather sketchy, but, okay, first thing that I want to put out there a lot of folks who are new to Linux saw that video and now they're all freaked out. They're like, oh my God, Ubuntu's going away. It's going to be all messed up. It's going, they're going to stop making it. No, that can never, ever, ever happen. Okay, Ubuntu is funded by a foundation that was set up by its founder. And the, the founder's name is Mark Shuttleworth. And it can never go away and it will always be freely distributed. And they have like $10 billion in that foundation. So Canonical, which is the company that supports Ubuntu, that is a for-profit organization that works with the Ubuntu Foundation. That doesn't necessarily mean that uh, what they do can't affect Ubuntu in the long run. Well, of course it can, but the system itself will always be available. And you can look at the Canonical page here where they talk about this. I will share this link in the description to the video. And so you can understand a little bit about that. Also, some more details have kind of popped up since I did that video, but not much. There's not been very much official that has come from Canonical other than the blog post. Quids Up, who is a YouTuber who uh, posts some really cool videos, he did some digging around and he came up with some numbers that were rather interesting. Canonical lost $350 million last year. And I am sure that the changes that they're doing have to do with that because what they have essentially done is they are eliminating any non-profitable project. So when you're talking about Unity, that is a desktop that the canonical company has developed and they maintain themselves. And it's not been very well accepted in the Linux community. So they are the ones who are completely working on Unity. And it would make sense for them to go ahead and drop that because it takes a lot of resources to develop and maintain software that way. Whereas if they work with the GNOME project and then they use the GNOME desktop proper on Ubuntu, that's a lot easier to do. As a matter of fact, Linux Quest, who is another YouTuber, he actually did a video where he took the GNOME 3 desktop and made it look and act like Unity. So it's not that hard to do. And Unity has always borrowed a lot from GNOME anyway. Uh, so when you are sitting here on Ubuntu 1604 and you might be saying to yourself, well, uh, it's going to change on me. First of all, Ubuntu 1604 will be supported until 2021. So if you are running this now and you are liking your Unity desktop experience, don't worry about it. By the time they switch over to the GNOME desktop environment, which is going to be happening with 1804 that is next year so that would be next April you're still going to have three years left on your 
1604 uh, or two or three years there. So you can wait a while, and I'm sure that it's going to be a really solid distribution when 1804 comes along. And a lot of folks who have commented on that video, and I have gotten almost a thousand comments on it, are just really happy that Ubuntu is not going to be doing Unity. And the other projects like Ubuntu Phone, the Mirror Display Manager, uh, convergence, all that stuff, they weren't making any money off of it, so it just makes sense for them to just drop it, and it really wasn't accepted in the community. So, uh, I think in the end, it's going to be good for Ubuntu on the desktop. It's certainly going to be good for Ubuntu on servers and in the cloud, because that's really where they're going to be focusing on things. So, we'll just wait and see how this shakes out. The bad part of it is, is that uh, there are numbers floating around that as many as as much as 60% of the folks who work for Canonical may lose their jobs. And uh, Canonical is not a huge company, not like Microsoft or, you know, one of them big giant companies. It's, it's a big company, but it's not that big. And they only employ like 700 people. So I'm kind of sorry to hear that. I actually have some acquaintances who work for Canonical and haven't heard a word from them. And Brian Lunduk, uh, who is a, a fellow who talks a lot about what goes on in the Linux world, said that he tried to contact Canonical. This was on Thursday, and they hadn't responded to him. And the folks that he knows that worked for Canonical, and he knows a lot more, uh, couldn't talk. So we'll see what happens. We're just going to ride this out. But in the end, I think it's going to be good. I just don't like to hear about people losing their jobs. So if you're new to, uh, new to Linux, new to Ubuntu, you're liking what you got, don't worry about it. You're cool. You're not going to lose support going to be here for a long, long, long time. Next thing I want to talk about is just a quick response to a few comments that I have gotten. You know, I post a lot of videos here and show you how to do groovy things in the terminal. And then I get, every now and again, I get some comments from people who have things to say like, uh, the terminal is archaic and why should we have to type in a cur uh, terminal in 2017 to get things done? And then I get other people who'd say, I like to use Linux, but I'm afraid of using the terminal. I'm not good at memorizing things, blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of negativity toward a terminal. And to them and to you, I say, the Bash terminal is one of the most attractive features in Linux. And if you are going to be dabbling with the operating system and considering making it your daily operating system, it would behoove you to learn a little bit about the terminal. But the truth of the matter is you don't. If you're running Linux Mint, if you're running Manjaro, if you're running Corora, if you are running Ubuntu Mate, chances are you don't have to open a terminal. However, if you get into trouble and you need something fixed on your machine and you seek help, chances are the person that is going to be helping you is going to be telling you commands to put into the terminal because that's how this works. If I'm supporting somebody and trying to get something set up or helping them, it's a lot easier for me to tell them a few commands or send them a script to run than it is for me to sit there and go, okay, open this window, click on this box. It'll be the third one down. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, the third one. And they, I don't see what you're talking about. Where is it? It's over there. No, it's the upper left-hand corner. Yeah, it's right there. You would not believe how difficult that is. If I can give somebody a few commands to type in a terminal and it will get the job done, then I'm going to do it. And uh, the truth of the matter is, is that's somewhat true for other operating systems as well. You know, there is a command line in Windows. There is a, there's a bash terminal in Mac. You don't use it as often because the focus of those systems has always been pretty much graphics. But in Linux, graphics is icing on a, on a very sweet cake, and that is the fact that you have a system that you can do a lot with just by typing in simple commands. So one of the uh, quotes that I really like about the terminal is, is that a graphic user interface will make easy tasks easy, but the terminal will make complicated things possible. So... You know, all this terminal hate, man. Don't don't be don't be throwing it out there. Don't knock it till you try it. As a matter of fact, if you are one of those people who is currently on the fence and you're wondering whether you want to try and get into learning about Linux, I'm gonna put a link to my video called Beginner's Guide to the Bash Terminal. And if you will take an hour of your time to watch that video, 
I think that you will see that it's not as big and bad, as scary as people make it out to be. And also in that video, I talk a lot about some of the more powerful things that you can do. Like for instance, I've got a terminal open here and this is my local terminal. And I mean, I can find out anything that's going on with this machine here, right? Let me just get it to print a calendar so I put something on the screen. And I'm also logged into another one of my computers while I'm making this video on this machine. I can see what that machine is doing. As a matter of fact, that machine is being used right now in another room. But yet I can see what's going on. And obviously with the uh, way the CPU is jumping up there, I think somebody's playing a game back there. So this is really cool. And I can do this with all of my machines. And I can do it from a terminal. And so therefore there's a lot of power here. There's a lot of different things that you can do to gain control over your computing life in ways that you never ever dreamt of before. And there's a lot of room for creativity here. So don't knock it till you try it. And finally, I wanted to make a quick comment on SSDs. And the reason why I wanted to do that was because I posted uh, a comment uh, in the Easy Linux page on Facebook about my last SSD dying. I had two or three of them, and finally the last one gave up. It was an Intel, and I was in the middle of moving some data onto it, and then it just went and died, which is the way they seem to go. They don't give you any warning at all. They just die. As a matter of fact, I even tested that drive, opened it up in disks to check its health, and it just went poof and died on me. And that's my big complaint with SSDs is the fact that they just die. There's no warning whatsoever. Uh, it just dies on you. And also, uh, I posted a thing on there, and you know, there's a lot of propaganda going around about how you can write so many terabytes to an SSD, and you can read so many before the SSD burns up. And I'm not really sure whether all of that applies to the real world, because I can tell you that I've had a lot of hard drives, and I've had some spinning drives die on me too but not as many as you know as fast or as uh, abruptly as ssds so call me an old stick in the mud but i think i'm going to stick to my spinning drives for a little while anyway i wanted to share this uh, thing up here about enabling trim on your ssd drives uh, it kind of goes through and explains the process of how to do that and uh, i thought this was kind of a cool little article and you can also look at uh, enabling trim support for SSDs, uh, depending on what distro you're using as well. So Ubuntu has it built in these days. So it will detect that it's an SSD. And what it will do is it'll go, oh, it's an SSD. So it will run the trimfs command once a week. And it will go ahead and do that for you. And essentially what trim is, it is a way to, it's called wear leveling and it helps the SSD to last longer. It kind of spreads the data out across the different little modules of flash memory in there. It makes it last longer. So I wanted to go ahead and share that and kind of share my experience. I, I'm going to stick to spinning drives for a while, gang. I think that uh, the latest configuration of the old Dell here, I've got a couple of spinners in here, one for home and one for the uh, root directory, and they're both... Western Digital Caviar drives. So it works pretty cool. And to tell you the truth, it's almost as fast as an SSD. At least it is on this old machine. So anyway, you can check that out if you want to. I'm going to uh, give you that link and also check it out for your, your particular distribution of Linux. Make sure trim is in enabled uh, if you're using SSD drives because that will help them to last longer and maybe they won't die on you the way mine do. Uh, people have speculated because I posted something about it that there was something wrong with the power supply on the computer. Now, the power supply is fine. I've had them die in all kinds of different computers. It's just what SSDs do. And I wrote them to death. I mean, I have probably formatted and reloaded that SSD 25 times in the last two years because I do all this kind of stuff. I like hard drives, and I move them around, and I try different things, so it's fun for me. 
And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I certainly do appreciate it. Just a bunch of stuff I threw in here. Wanted to throw my opinion out there. Love to hear your comments and suggestions. Would I would really like to see you over on Facebook. If you are a Facebook user, then come join the fun and like the Easy Linux Facebook page. And be sure and check out EasyLinux.com. If, if you get an error, don't worry. It's just something in the transfer. Uh, if you click on that and it doesn't come up, don't worry. It'll be coming back. And also check out FreedomPenguin.com for lots of really cool stories about Linux contributed by folks such as myself. We'll do it again soon, gang. Thanks for watching.